to speak now to uh, William Lawrence, who's a professor of political science at the American University, and he joins us now live from Washington. Uh, great to have you on the programme. What do you make of uh, those warnings that we've heard from the very f for the first time from uh, President Biden about uh, the potential of chemical weapons and biological weapons being used by Russia on Ukraine, and what evidence is there for them? Well... Any evidence that they're going to use them would be classified, so we wouldn't have access to that here in the media space. But uh, uh, um, Putin has used them in the past, mm -hmm. and he's done certain signaling before he uses them, like accusing his foes of using them, uh, as he recently accused Americans and Ukrainians of developing uh, um, uh, chemical weapons and biological weapons on the ground in Ukraine. So this is what he does in advance. And then... Uh, the U.S., of course, in the intelligence realm, can watch where certain Russian experts go or certain uh, parts of the Russian military go or special forces uh, to anticipate something like that is going on. I think it's also important to, in connection to two other things, the use of hypersonic mess, uh, missiles and the, th the new threat of cyber attacks on the United States by Russia, because this type of asymmetrical warfare, this uh, uh, a desire for the world stage to create a conflict with the whole West and with the United States, rather than just with the Ukrainians, is part of uh, Putin's game plan as he sort of tries to win over people who are anti-American uh, to his cause. And so this is all part of his uh, framing of the conflict as a conflict against some sort of Western hegemony. And you say the evidence is classified, but we have seen in the past um, that at U.S. intelligence, when it comes to weapons of mass destruction, let's take it, Iraq, were false. So you know, I'm just thinking of the trust of the public right now, but also, you know, we've seen what's been used in Syria. So what can people trust? Well, I used to work in the intelligence community, and if we go rewind to 2003, the intelligence community itself at the working level got Iraq right. Uh, but the intelligence that was available was politicized by the Bush administration to uh, justify what was probably an illegal war. Uh, uh, and they did it in a way that manipulated certain threads of intelligence into a case that they built, almost like lawyers, rather than using the actual evidence, which was uh, very circumspect and not likely, to use the phrase, of the intelligence community. Uh, right now, we have an unpoliticized intelligence community, and they've been right again and again and again on this invasion. Uh, and I suspect that they're right again in this case. Uh, but it's very important. You raise a very important issue that, you know, trust but verify, uh, know your sources, uh, know who's talking to you and what their record is. And this intelligence community with this administration has a pretty good track record. So given that uh, the U.S. president is taking, taking that now to his visit to Europe at that extraordinary uh, NATO summit, what do you think that they will decide when they all meet together in Brussels this week? Well, many things will happen, including the sharing of intelligence. And I've been in settings uh, as a diplomat where intelligence was shared both with the Five Eyes, the, the four countries that uh, cooperate on intelligence closely with the United States and other allies, whether France or Germany uh, and others. Uh, and so intelligence will be shared. Uh, um, but I think most of what's going on uh, with Putin's visit is ramping up uh, uh, close coordination at the EU and the NATO level uh, in terms of uh, both the military and diplomatic and economic uh, uh, um, uh, combined action against Putin. Because everyone's simultaneously come to more or less the same conclusion, which is the only way to get a diplomatic solution here, the only way to get Putin to the table is to uh, um, in, um, force more defeats on the battlefield. Uh, and to further cripple the, the Russian economy. And with all of that going on simultaneously, we can accelerate the phasing back or the phasing down of this warfare. As long as um, uh, Putin uh, senses uh, division among his foes uh, and seems like or feels like he's been told by his uh, commanders in the field that he's making some progress, this war will be longer and deadlier for Ukrainian civilians. William Lawrence from the American University, great to speak to you. Thank you so much.